Welcome to Pod Capers, the official podcast of a place to hang your cape. And this week, we're talking about another Comic Con! Cue the music! When you have a free weekend and don't know what to do, your friends all have other plans and nothing feels brand new. Don't waste your life, you damn waste of space. There is a place we all can go to Where things happen that seem untrue Shut up, shut up Just shut your stupid face Don't you try to protest Seriously, buddy, give it a rest Just trust me This madness you must embrace Leave the rat race Pick up the pace Let's go to Comic-Con. You're going to Comic-Con. Get your head out of the clouds. We will beat the crowds if we get a damn move on. Woo! We've only got three days. Don't get in a daze. It will be a brand new dawn of the Comic-Con. Let's all go to Comic-Con. There's so many things to do. Don't just sit and stew. Get out there and have some fun. So don't walk. This is something to which you should just run. The convention can seem a bit overwhelming. Apologies if I was a tad unforthcoming. It's true here there are lots of people, cosplayers and geeky nerds. I know there are no words for the thing we call Comic-Con. We are at Comic-Con. Come on, it's not a ghost town. Let's just mill around. Or you could give up and go home. Jog on. We've only bloody started at this fucking cool comic. Con. 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 We're going to Comic Con. Folks here don't care for naysayers Just look at all the cosplayers They stayed up every night for three weeks To make their gender flip Goku costume Plus that one that's a vampire slayer Here is where they are accepted Here they're not freaks! (laughs) Here at Comic Con! Yeah! Come on down to Comic Con We'll go and fucking pillage the Comic Village. It's a comic buffet. So let's go to Comic Con today. All these geeks and nerds. I just have no words. They come out of the blue. This place is fucking magic. She's taking this Comic Con view. Ah. Gone, 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 gone. Enjoy Comic Con. I fuck in love Comic Con. It's true. Hello there, capers, and as I said, welcome to Pod Capers, the official podcast of a place to hang your cape. My name is Scott James Merridew, and this is the show where we talk about various geek and nerd-related topics, and are joined each week by a very special and different guest. But this week, we're doing things a little bit differently. You see, David Malosky, our editor in Cape, recently undertook a little journey to the Cardiff Independent Comic Expo, and uh, seeing as how uh, Cardiff is a bit far away from me because in fact I live in Edinburgh and also Cardiff is in Wales and I fucking hate Wales and I will never return there. I will never return there for as long as I live. The pain I endured is it, irrelevant. However, I see no reason why my hatred for that woe-begotten and dismal land should deprive you wonderful capers of David's exploits. So thankfully, David took the time to document his journey and all the people that he met therein. So you're going to hear David talking to a lot of different people about a lot of different things. And you know what? I'm just going to let him take it from here. David, take it away. Hello, capers. This is 
David Malofsky, editor in Cape, reporting to you from the lovely city of Cardiff. Uh, I have arrived. I am at my Airbnb, ready for my hashtag caper in Cardiff this weekend as I go to the Cardiff International Comic Expo, C-Ice or Sice. I'm not really sure what to call it. Um, so I'm really excited. This is my first time in Wales, so I decided I was going to uh, record the journey into a podcast for all of you to listen to. So what you'll be hearing uh, in this week's episode, instead of Scott's lovely tones, although I'm sure he's already recorded an intro that you've heard. Um, so instead, you're going to be hearing me on my entire journey through Cardiff and uh, to the wonderful on the wonderful adventure that will be the uh cardiff international comic expo which i'm very excited about i've heard nothing but good things about this comic con um it's been uh one of the ones that i've always been meaning to get to but um you know it's in cardiff which is a bit of a, a slog for me from uh from london but um i had a very nice uh journey down on the bus on the mega bus so far um my bus was actually called mega mcmega face so that was fun um so yeah so i'm now i'm at my airbnb like i said i'm just sort of alone here uh very literally just talking to myself um into a microphone which is making me feel very uh you know normal and sane um but yeah so let's see so what am i looking forward to this weekend um just to start so let's see well okay so time right now so it's friday at 4 p.m just to give you a, a heads up, and I'm uh, off at about six in a couple hours to meet up with some of my comic friends. I'll bring my trusty recorder with me, and perhaps we will get to to see what um, what they're looking forward to at the con. But what I'm looking forward to is it's been a long time since I've been to a convention um, outside of London and 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 everything, and in a place where I can definitely say I, there are going to be comics that I've never seen before. And I think that's what I'm most excited about for this weekend. That for the first time in probably two years, I'm going to get to see that I'm going to a convention where there are going to be more comics I haven't heard of than comics I have heard of. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm always looking forward to meeting new people. Um, and of course, I'm looking forward to seeing all my old friends. Um, a lot of uh, friends of the, of the site and the show are going to be here this weekend. Um, Sarah Millman has very graciously been uh, offering to show me around a bit. Um, we'll also have uh sean jefferson is going to be around um the boys from attic studios including dan harris who as you all know designed our logo um there's uh, going to be some people from big punch studios although i don't know if john Locke, who was on the episode uh, a couple weeks ago is going to be there i think it's just going to be nick angel but we'll find out um but yeah i'm really excited about this convention and uh i'm really excited about exploring cardiff so I will check in with you all later and let you all know how it goes. Later that night, David returns to the Airbnb. So I'm back at the Airbnb after going out and meeting um, a whole bunch of uh, creators who are local. Um, so let's see if I can remember everyone. It was uh, Sarah Millman uh, and Sean Jefferson uh, and Sam Webster were there. Uh, at first, and then um, Gavin Mitchell and Emily Owen showed up, and then uh, Rachel Smith and Adam Cadwell joined us, and Joe Glass uh, also as well. Um, I tweeted a picture of uh, most of them <laughs> um, during the night. Uh, yeah, we went out for some drinks and some uh, chicken wings. It was a, it was a really fun night. Um, yeah, it just got me really pumped for tomorrow, mostly. Um, I'll probably record another bit in the morning, but um, yeah, I'm really excited for tomorrow, and let's uh, let's see what uh, what it holds. And I still haven't seen any dragons, man. It's been uh, I've been in Wales for like hours now. Where are all the dragons? That's what I want to know. Hopefully, we'll see some tomorrow. I'll keep you posted. Stay tuned. After getting a good night's sleep, David awakens the next day, ready for the convention. Will he have a good time? Will he meet interesting people? Will he see a dragon? Let's find out. Alright guys, I'm at the con. I'm uh, just waiting for the doors to open. Actually, I met the organizer, Iz, who was very nice. Gave me uh, my free ticket to get in as press, which is always a lot of fun um 
And yeah, it looks like there's a bunch of cosplayers already hanging out outside. I'm seeing a great uh, Yoshi with a little Mario that I'm going to go try and take a picture of later when their picture's all done. Um, the little bit of the con that I've seen already looks really good, and uh, I'm pretty excited. So I'll keep you updated as soon as I get inside. So I'm here with uh, Di Powell, the artist behind New Wasteland. Um, do you want to tell me a little bit about the book and the world of the book? Okay, hi. Um, yeah, New Wasteland Fairy Tales. It's about a giant pink robot that thinks it's an eight-year-old girl. And her and her grandfather travel a post-apocalyptic wasteland looking for mummy and daddy and beating up chavs and having all sorts of other crazy adventures. Um, the world... It, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. So the world is a stereotypical... Fallout-esque, Mad Max-style, post-apocalyptic wasteland. You know, just the world has ended. It's all just road warriors and violence. But I just decided to put a giant pink robot in a tutu in there and see what happens. I mean, why not? <laughs> well, it, it works. It's worked out well. Um, the first issue is a nice little introduction to the characters, which was the intention. But from there, uh, the main characters need to drum up a bit of cash to carry on their journeys. So they decide to enter uh, Becky, the robot, into a Thunderdome-style deathmatch. But obviously you can't tell that to an eight-year-old, so they just tell her it's school. Which, depending on where you've gone to school, may or may not be a similar thing anyway. I was educated in the valleys. <laughs> so how long have you been working on the comic, and what issue have you gotten up to? Issue one was released in 2013, and... Uh, the sales did really well off of um, the initial one. I, I got like an initial print run of a hundred, and I sold out in my first first con because it was a big two day at CIA. Uh, I'm up to issue three at the moment, and the comic is it's temporarily on hiatus just while I do other things. So what are, uh, what are some of those other things? Uh, we've just finished off Age of Savagery, which is an anthology of swords and sorcery style. Um, fantasy stories like Age of Conan, Red Sonja, that that proper old school stuff. I'm talking old, the, the, the real Arnold Schwarzenegger Conan movies, not not the new ones. Uh, we just finished that off. That came out a couple of weeks back, so we're championing that at the moment. And I'm currently in the middle of recoloring the first three issues of New Wastelands. That's going to take a little while, but when it's done. The whole, pro the whole project will look so much nicer, and I can hopefully carry on with the stories then as well. Uh, as, as it stands, the first three issue wraps up the first little story arc, so there's no unnecessary cliffhangers. People aren't left screaming for answers to questions, but there's still lots of stories that I want to do with those characters as well. Awesome. Well, thanks. Um, so we'll put some uh, links in the show notes to where you can find Dai's stuff. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep uh, exploring the con. So I'm here with Russell Olson, and um, he's just released uh, about a month ago Lady Hollywood, his newest comic. You want to tell us a bit about it? Yeah, it's um, Lady Hollywood is a kind of B-movie noir L.A. story um, set in the modern time, so it's a little bit different from my previous work. Um, I'm doing it with Cult Empire Comics. Uh, the writer is George Lennox, who's done um, Vietnam Zombie Holocaust and Vampires Everywhere and Horror Show. So this is his first foray into the world outside of horror. Um, but still playing really heavily on this kind of iconic B-movie tropes. Um, lots of kind of like Foxy Brown references uh, and you know, all the sort of like vigilante films of the 80s. Um, lots of neons and sort of uh, shadows and um, kind of stock cult figures. It's a lot of fun. So, so what's the actual story of it? Uh, the story is about um, Kate Holloway, who's a, a private investigator. Um, she uh, works kind of based on like that kind of that trope of like private investigators like using honey traps to capture philandering husbands um, and in the process of, of doing a big score she winds up getting caught in a, a kind of a, a web a scheme of sorts that is much larger than what she thinks it is and it hits closer to home and it starts to bring back kind of personal demons that she didn't know were lurking in the shadows so uh, what were some of the influences on the book both the art and the writing so um, for the writing, George has talked a lot about uh, quite, quite, quite stuck. So that um, trying to think of the name of the films. Um, what's the What's the Charles Bronson film? The big one. Uh, Bullet. 
What's that? Bullet? Uh, no, um, oh, Charles Bronson, the, um... Charles Bronson. Yeah, why can't I think of it? Um, it, it's the, they've, they've just remade it with, um, um... Oh, like, uh, Thomas Crown? No, oh, why can't I think of it? It's, um, with, um, Bruce Willis. They've just redone it with oh, Bruce Willis. Uh, death, death Note? Yeah, no. Death, no, Death, um... The Vigilante one. Yeah, yeah, maybe we should start that over. Um, but anyway, it. so it's, yeah, um... Based on that Death kind of Wish. Death Wish, yeah. Based yeah. on the Death Wish series, looking at like the you got there in the end. Yeah, so it the first issue only starts to look at like vigilantism, but about the the the, the what it takes to break somebody to get to that point, and then but this sort of questions more about or will question more about once we get into issue two of like the the personal um, uh, 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 the fallback of what happens when you actually bring on the mantle, trying to bring justice for yourself. Um, so there's a bit of that. There's a bit of Foxy Brown, that kind of um, empowered woman. She's quite. She's she's very vulnerable, but at the same time, she's very strong. So she's not your normal kind of kick ass and take names. Um, this is. She would only do this because um, she's defending her family um, and her livelihood. It's not not quite Jessica Jones then. Yeah, no, not at all. She's not. She's. I mean, I suppose she's slightly jaded, but not not to that extent. You know, she's she's doing it's it for her family. Like, eager to fight. Yes, absolutely. I, I think there's a real reluctance to it. And I think she's almost driven to it out of necessity as opposed to it just finds her. Um, I think she's a really interesting character. I think there's not a whole lot out there which is similar. Um, a really unique take on that kind of the, the film, not quite film fatale, but um, the, the kind of the badass nickname superhero. Nice. And uh, where can people find it at the moment? Um, at the moment, uh, you can find it on. Um, that's a good question. You can find it on. Oh yeah, you can find it on the Cult Empire uh, website, um, which is I think it's Cult Empire. Sorry. We'll we'll put a link in the show notes so you can find it, guys. Um, well, thanks, Russell, and uh, we'll catch up with you later. So I'm here with Emily Owen uh, of Brain Shootles. Um, so Emily, do you want to tell us what your uh, what the new stuff is you have today? Okay, so new today, or newish today, we have Mini Mantras, which is a super cool little tiny pocket sized book of mantras to help you if you're having an anxiety attack or panic attack in public or something. So it gives you something calming to concentrate on. It's kind of pretty, it's cute, and it gives you some little things to concentrate on rather than focusing on what you're stressed about. And we've also got Fraser Fanzine, which started because I misread a thread on Twitter about Frasier fanzine, wondered why on earth anyone would want to do a, a fanzine about Fraser Campbell, and then decided I'd do one anyway. So, so yeah, that's that's my two new things that are out at the moment. And of course I've got Brain Toodles for sale, which of course have done the second print run of, so... Uh, yeah, exciting. Awesome, and how's the day been going so far? It's really nice. I've met, actually spoken to loads of people I already know, but there's a load of new people that I haven't seen before as well. So I've been trying to make new friends as well as uh, chat to everybody. So it's, it's, as always, it's a good crowd at a Comic-Con. And uh, where can people find uh, your books if they want to buy them? So I'm on Twitter, at Tomboy Princess. Um, so you can find my links there but uh, all the books and everything are available on the Etsy store which is if you search We Are Happy Clam which is the little banner we've got for, for our comics um, you'll be, be able to find them all there at the moment it's just my stuff but there are two other books in the works that I can't really say much about but there will be more than just me on there uh, by the end of the year very exciting so we'll have to stay tuned and see what comes out well Thanks for talking to us, and uh, we'll catch you soon. Thanks very much. All right, so I'm here with uh, Jenny Clements, and she's got um, the second volume of her new book out, and she's going to tell us all about it. Hi. Um, well, I'm selling Maya Snell today, uh, volume one and two, which I'm really excited about because it's just come out. Uh, Maya Snell is a supernatural body-stripping comedy drama slash horror set in an alternate Tudorific history. It's about a dashing wizard called Myers, who's a bit of an asshole, and he comes to this world and steals away a girl called Elle, and she's not too happy about this, as you can imagine. And it's basically about them having to cooperate and coexist uh, in the world that he's thrust them into, uh, which is uh, kind of pre-Reformation Britain, but with a bit of a cultural twist, where you've got Romans, 
Vikings, Normans, Anglo-Saxons all rub, rub and shoulders with each other. It's heavily based on British folklore, mythology and history. And it's basically how they uh, come together and work together to both get what they desire. El to go home and Myers uh, you'll find out in book two. Very interesting. And you said the, the book just came out. Where can people find it? Uh, people can read the comic at MyersNL.com and it will be available uh, in future on Amazon.com. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for talking to us. No worries. Thank you. So I'm talking to Joe Glass, the creator of The Pride. Do you want to tell us a bit about the comic? Yeah, sure. Um, so The Pride is all about a team of all LGBTQ superheroes. So just adding a bit more representation, diversity, but also just telling fun, bright superhero stories again, um, instead of being like all grim, dark, and constantly foreboding. Um, we basically do two sort of formats of that. You've got Pride, which is the main series, and then Pride Adventures, which is an anthology series with short self-contained stories. Um, we've got like 10 comics out in all, which are all collected in a hardcover as well. A um, bunch of pin badges. We're just sort of doing a bit of everything, really. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a pride. Basically, you're sort of uh, the JL gay of superheroes. <laughs> nice. And um, what uh, what is it about the superhero genre that you really like? Um, it's just the, it's it's the modern myth. Like um, we obviously have all these myths and legends which we grew up with, like our the Arthurian legend or Hercules and all the classics. And the the superhero idea at its core concept is kind of connected to that. Um, and the whole thing with myths and legends, they each myth and legend really tells us something about the human condition and it's kind of ultimately the same with superheroes even when you're talking like the cosmic superheroes and not like the down-to-earth spider-man type superheroes they're still telling a very human story um when told right um even with bombastic zany action adventure tales as well so it's kind of, that's kind of what's always sort of really drawn me to the concept of them to be honest awesome and uh, are you doing anything special for pride month this month uh, yeah, I'm actually doing a little bit of a sale. Um, all digital copies um, are available through our online store, which is thepride.bigcartel.com. Uh, and they're all half price for the entire month of June. Um, so that'll be uh, 75 pence for the single issues or just four pounds for the whole hardcover um, download. Um, the print copies um, are available as well. So like I say, people can get them too and I ship anywhere in the world. Um, but yeah, up for Pride Month, any digital um, copies you want are all half price. Awesome. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks very much. So I'm here with Bryony and Claire from Wine and Zine. Or is it Wine and Zine? Wine and Zine. Wine and Zine. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Anyway, um, they've just launched a new podcast and they're going to tell me all about it. Uh, so it's called the Wine and Zine Podcast and it's Basically, it's the Wine and Zine is a collective of five different ladies from around the UK, and we just chat about different topics to do with zines, comics, mostly like indie small press comics, films, TV, games, all the stuff about like creating them as well. A uh, different topic every month. It comes out the first of every month with some mini sods in between, and yeah, it's just us bantering at each other. Basically, <laughs> yes, yes, banter. Yeah. So what is uh, what do you guys talk about on the first episode? Uh, the first episode is an introduction of what we, who we are, what we do, and the kinds of things we'll talk about um, with some taking the piss out of each other mixed in, in between. Yes. And then we do uh, like a recommendation of something that we're loving that month at the end of it. So I recommend something and then Bri recommends something. Yeah. And then we put it... Put it's a lot of fun. Like, yeah, yeah. Nice. And uh, I see you guys have a lot of different books here. Are all of them uh, sort of part, like everyone sort of contributes to all of them or how does, how does that all work? Uh, there's, there's a mix. Uh, so we've got the first uh, Wine and Zine project was Swap, which is a, a gender swap uh, illustrative zine of different franchises from movies to games to TV series. And it's just swapping the genders. Um, so that was the first project we did just to see if we could actually do this whole collaborative thing. And it went down really well. So we were like, cool, let's keep this up. Uh, and then the second big project we did was a, a dog charity zine. Uh, so that was a bit bigger than just the five of us. That was uh, 67 artists in total wow. from around the world. And they all uh, donated an original piece uh, of dog art and all the profits go to Dogs Trust. Um, 
so that was that's good. That's um, that's being received quite well. Uh, but now we've got in the works an anthology, so action to do a comic. Uh, so e uh, each of us will do a uh, three to five page comic of totally different subject matters and genre and characters. And yeah, that will be coming out uh, for Thorpeable this year. September. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, where can people find you online? Uh, so they can find us on Twitter on uh, Wine and Zine, or we also have our online store at wineandzine.bigcartel.com. And you can get to the podcast from either of those. They're linked there. And uh, are you guys like on iTunes and all the, that sort of stuff? Yep, apparently, yes. Yes, we are. <laughs> Podbean, iTunes, uh, CastBox, uh, all of the, the major ones we should be. Awesome. Well, thanks for talking to us, guys. So I'm here with the boys from King Legacy, um, a comic that just released last year. So why don't you tell me a little bit about the book? Well, basically, have you ever wondered what would have happened if the king of rock and roll had not actually died in the 70s, but had instead been abducted by a race of aliens to lead an intergalactic war against an evil alien race? It keeps me up like every night. I wonder so often. Can you tell me more? Uh, well, you don't have to worry because we've actually made a comic about it for you. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so, uh, it's the three of you guys who have worked on it. Do you want to tell me a little bit about what each of you have done on it? Uh, yeah, so I'm the artist, uh, Dave. The, we've got Jay on the end, who uh, wrote it. And then Liam in the middle, who coloured it. The talent. The talent. Amazing. And you guys are currently working on issue two, I hear. Yes. Yeah, uh, right now. Literally working on it right now. It's, it's you know, about five years out. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, guys. I'm here with Nick Angel, the creator of Cat and Meringue. Um, do you want to tell us a bit about the comic? Yeah, sure. Um, Cat and Meringue is a, it started life as a daily strip webcomic, kind of like newspaper funnies, like four panels every time restricted. And I drew one of them every single day as a sort of personal challenge to myself as an artist, so that I was always creating something. The idea is they're, they're in their boat, Cat and Meringue sail around in a catamaran. And uh, very silly, all puns, like stupid humor like that. And um, it's all sort of gags and jokes, but there is this kind of big overarching story of um, them being annoyed at me, the artist, becoming aware that they're in a comic and hating me because I'm putting them through all sorts of rubbish. And I ended up drawing it for a thousand days, uh, which was the best part of three years, and collected it all up into a big book called A Thousand Days of Adventure. Awesome, and now you're um, you're bringing them into the real world, I hear. Uh, yes, yeah, which may be a, a mistake, because I think they have it in for me, so that's potentially quite dangerous. But um, yes, I'm running a Kickstarter to produce plushy, uh, custom plushy toys of the duo. So Cat is a little sort of yellow cute shape, and Meringue is a little white cute shape with a little quiff on his head. And uh, I'm running a Kickstarter to, to get a production run of the plushies so that I can sell them at future shows and on my website. Awesome, and we will have a link in the show notes to the Kickstarter so you can find it and support Nick and Cat and Meringue. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you very much. Cheers. So I'm chatting with Vince from the Awesome Comics Podcast. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Dave. How are you? Yeah, I'm pretty good. So tell us a bit about what the uh, ACP, the Awesome Comics Podcast, is about. The ACP. When you put it like that, it sounds really legi legitimate, doesn't it? Um, now, the Awesome Comics Pod is basically, it's, uh, it's a podcast, obviously, it's in the title. Um, that talks about making comics, reading comics, um, but we focus on like sort of Indian small press stuff. Um, purely brought about because when we started it, we just wanted to talk to more like-minded people about actually making comics, and, and therefore spreading it, spreading the word. Um, it, thankfully, we've had quite a, you know we've had some people listen to it, got a little bit of a community, and lots of creators been on. We do it weekly, so and it's a good laugh. Um, I'm here actually today with one of my co-hosts who's putting me off in the background. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to look at him because that's, that's the kind of show it is. It's very unprofessional, yeah. but hopefully a lot of fun. And hopefully people learn stuff from it too. Yeah. So. I mean, I've heard it. I know exactly what it's like. <laughs> oh, God. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I, I mean, it says a lot about the show that we have to say, we have to apologize when people go, oh, I listen to your show. And the first thing we say is, I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah. But it's worth listening to, I swear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and so you've also just released uh, issue two of your Awesome Comics anthology. Can you tell us a little bit about how that came to be? Yes. Uh, awesome Comics, the anthology, was, I mean, starting a podcast, as you know, is a ridiculous idea. And Why yes. does anyone do it? Um, and then shortly after we did it, we talk a, we talk a good game. But then I, then I thought, well, let's actually put our money where our mouth is and actually make a comic. 
So um, we've planned to put out four issues over a year. Um, so, that, so it's quarterly, basically. Each issue, it, there's three stories told over four issues. So it's four parts, a story. I'm, story. I'm <laughs> confusing myself. Yeah, so, so it, every one of the hosts has their own story that they're telling. And then it's told in four parts over the year. And we're launching issue two here at Cardiff today. Um, I've already picked up my copy. Good man. And I love you for it. Um, yeah, so launch day is always an exciting one. And, and we, we've obviously we've got we got a couple of months before the next one's out but and we plan to do I mean rather than it just being like mo most anthologies the short stories like they're four or five pages but with these we're telling like 10 page chapters so by the end of it you'll have a 40 page complete story by the end of the year if you've read them all hopefully you will if you buy them please buy them nice please buy my comic. <laughs> <laughs> so where, where can uh, the good people the good listeners actually find uh, the comic to buy it well um, I hope I get this right because the podcast is at awesomecomics.podbean.com um, and I believe it's awesomecomicpod.bigcartel.com um, well, we'll put links in the show notes for the listeners so you can find them. You're a scholar <laughs> and a legend, sir. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for chatting with us, Vince. <laughs> yeah, cheers, man. So talking to Patrick Montgomery, one of the creators of the Trolltooth Wars. His uh, other half is... Um, off being a fancy dandy man over in the corner, so we're going to let him be. And uh, Patrick, why don't you tell us a bit about the comic? So uh, Trolltooth Wars is based on a novel from 1989 that was written by Steve Jackson, uh, set in the world of the fighting fantasy books that he originated with Ian Livingstone. And I always sort of thought those books had a very strong visual style that would lend themselves quite well to comics. So I approached Steve and uh, said, well, can we do a comic based on this novel? He said, yes. We kickstarted it, and then, yeah, so Gavin and I put the book out, and we're really proud of it. We think we've got a strong fantasy quest adventure with some beautiful art. I'm only saying that because Gav's not at the table. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, I think the writing's okay, yeah. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> um, and is it just going to be the, the one book, or do you think you're going to do more with it um, in the future? There are other books in the series um, that could be adapted, uh, there are no plans at the moment. Um, if they want, if this does well and they approach us and would like us to do the second one, obviously we'd do it. But yeah, I think uh, it, it really does depend. So never say never, but at the moment, who knows? But you're very happy with the product you have now. Really am. Yes, I think it's. I think we've got a, a very good book that I'm very proud of. I think it's a good book too. And uh, where can the uh, our good listeners, our good capers, find the book if they wanted to buy it? You can buy it at www thetrolltoothwars.bigcartel.com Amazing. And we'll also include the link in the show notes for everyone so you can find it very easily. Brilliant. Excellent. All right. Thanks for chatting with us, Patrick. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks. So I'm just talking to the show organizer for the Cardiff Ex Expo. Ugh. It's hard to say. Cardiff Expo. Mm -hmm. uh, is McAuliffe, whose surname I was also worried about saying <laughs> wrong. Um, so how many years have you been doing the show? We've been doing it for seven years. We started in 2011, uh, and we did it. Uh, we took a year off in 2014. We've been going ever since then. Oh, nice! And um, what what makes this year's show special? Yeah, that was a. <laughs> I'm doing too many tongue twisters here. What's great about the show, and uh, what, what, how did you get started? Let's start with that. We got started uh, in 2011. Uh, Mike Allwood, who used to run Bristol Expo, um, when it was a two-day big event, when it was only Bristol and Birmingham really were the only conventions in the UK. Um, he'd done that for about 15 years. He was looking for somewhere else to do a con. Cardiff didn't have any comic cons at all. Now we have, I think, four. Uh, so, oh, yeah. so uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a challenge um, as every year goes by. But he basically saw the potential. It's a really, really good city centre. It's got a massive student population. So he started it and asked me because he knew I was a massive comic nerd and an event manager. So um, I was his de deputy, basically, until two years ago when I took it over full time. Wow. Yeah. And uh, what has it been like uh, arranging this show? And what is this year, uh, what's special about this year? Yeah, I said it right. Yeah. <laughs> this year is really special, actually, because uh, we started in the Mercure, this venue, in 2011. We ran here for three years. 
Um, and then we moved venues uh, for, for a variety of reasons. And I really wanted to bring it back to the Mercure because it's kind of it's like the original home. It's where it all started. So I'm really, really pleased it's come back here. And I've basically tried to use elements of previous years that have worked and removed elements that maybe haven't. So I've brought back the cosplay parade and competition because it's so popular. Uh, we didn't have room in the previous venue for one, so that's great. I've got a retro gaming area, mainly because I'm a massive gamer and I wanted to play on a ZX Spectrum. <laughs> so I've got that. And that's been really, really popular. Um, and just, yeah, it's special because it's all about shouting about indie comics, indie creators. We have got pro guests, but they're all people who've started in the in indie industry and they've all got a massive love, common love for comics. And that's all I want to do is I want to keep spreading and shouting the, the news about comics being amazing. Were there any guests this year that you're really excited about having? Yes. <laughs> uh, Chris Wild Goose. I was really, really pleased. He's a lovely, lovely guy. Um, he started, again, he properly started in indie. Improper Books just an amazing, as you know, amazing publisher. Uh, he He's just come off a run on Batgirl, and his work on Batgirl's been amazing. I'm not a massive, massive superhero comic fan. I, I read a lot, but I don't read all of it. But I got back into Batgirl because he was on it, and I love his art. It's just gorgeous. And he's, yeah, he's brilliant, and he's a lovely guy, and I'm really pleased he came to this show. Yes. Awesome. Well, I know you've got a busy day today, so thanks yeah. for taking a minute to talk to us. Thank you very much. It's, it's a pleasure, and I'm, I'm very glad you're here, and I hope you're enjoying it. Yeah, I am. I really am. Brilliant. It's been a great right. show today. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, cheers, David. Right, I'm speaking to Stuart and Andy of True Believers, or OK True Believers? Uh, True Believers. True Believers, that's the one. Um, they've just put out a new anthology to support a charity. So can you tell me a bit about the comic and how it came to be? Yeah, um, we would wanted to do a anthology comic since we set True Believers up, but just never got around to it being the right time to do it kind of thing. Uh, we didn't want to do it till we could do it well kind of thing. Um, and then, yeah, set up Tales from Beyond Infinity, um, got a lot of small press people involved. Got about nine, is it nine? Eight. I think we got eight or nine local yeah, indie press artists and writers, and they, they were really kind that they contributed all their work. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a very popular, very good comic. And uh, who is it? Um, what's the charity that it's supporting? Uh, it's for the Sue Rider Lecampton Court Hospice, which is the local Sue Rider Hospice in the Cheltenham area. Um, we did the comic in memory of my brother in law, who sadly went there to die. Um, and um, yeah, they really looked after him and that, so we wanted to do something to raise some money for them. And he was a big comic book fan as well, so it all felt right. And um, Mike Collins did a really nice picture of him on the dedication page. That's really sweet. Um, so when did the comic come out? Uh, it launched at True Believers in February, so 4th of February this year, 3rd of February? 4th of February in Cheltenham. And then, yeah, it's been available since. Um, it's available on our website, and we bring it to events. It'll be our summer event, and um, we'll have that at the event next year as well. Nice, and I, I heard you mention that there may be an issue two coming. I think, uh, that's, I think that's a podcast exclusive right there. Yeah, um, number two is coming. Um, it's gone out. We've got some artists involved. Um, we'll be bringing stories to that. Um, yeah, more of the same. This one's got a um, theme, which is a collaboration team up kind of thing so sort of bringing together those classic crossover comics we used to love as kids awesome and uh, so where's the website where people can find it it's uh, www.oktruebelievers.com and yeah you can find everything on there there's links and whatnot to the relevant pages oh there's a Facebook page as well yep. if you if you basically type into Facebook if you type in true, um, OK True Believers yeah. yeah and you should be able to our logo will come up and you can get one from there as well Great. We'll also put links in the show notes so you can find it very easily if you're, once you're listening to this. And thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm here with Ian, the creator of Barnaby. Um, can you tell us a bit about the comic? Yes. Uh, Barnaby is all about uh, a little boy who uh, gets bullied quite a lot. And so he goes on adventures with his little friend, uh, Half Stripe, who's uh, a genetically modified bee. Uh, it's a fantastic little uh, quirky story. I hope a lot of people like it. Um, it's very indie, so if you like indie comics, check it out, man. And is it uh, all ages as well? It is uh, definitely all ages. Uh, it's a lot of... Uh, well, it's a very simplistic story, so a lot of people, especially kids, can uh, understand it and follow it quite easily. So, yeah, I would say it's all ages. Yeah, definitely. I see you have these little uh, bees. Are they? Did you say they were needlepoint or? Uh... Yeah. Uh, so the needle felt with bees. They take a little bit of time. Uh, there's a lot of stabbing involved, as uh, 
So you, so you get stung while you're making them? Yeah. <laughs> you do. You get stung. You get uh, a fair share of your stings. But uh, you start getting uh, used to them after a while. It's totally worth it. If you Obviously, you can't see them because it's a recording. But they're uh, cute little fluffy uh, yellow and black bees. As you know, bees, bees are quite cute anyway. So needle felt ones are uh, quite fun. And obviously, they don't sting you unless you're making them. So, yeah. Fair enough. And uh, where can people find the comics and the bees? Good question. <laughs> uh, the comics, so uh, on Etsy, uh, I don't know why I'm showing you, but uh, on Etsy, so it's Yian and Michaela. Uh, it's our actual, actually first shop, so it's our first ever shop on Etsy. And you can find everything there from uh, prints all the way through to needle felt bees and bow ties. So come check us out. We're a very bee friendly happy people and uh, if you like crafty handmade stuff then uh, yeah check us out on Etsy <laughs> awesome and we'll also include a link in the show notes that's very easy for you capers to find at home and uh, thanks for chatting with us thank you very much for interviewing me and uh, having a lovely conversation uh, before this so. <laughs> cheers so I'm chatting with Josh Somerville the creator of Heracles um, do you want to tell us a bit about the comic Cool, yeah, so it's um, a modern retelling of ancient Greek mythology, uh, focusing on the story, well, the trials of uh, Heracles. Um, I've got uh, four other main, well, four main characters in total. So we've got Heracles, his wife Megara, and Odysseus and Aeneas. Uh, all of the events in the comic um, occur after the events of uh, the Trojan War, basically. So it's uh, based a bit on the Iliad. It's based a bit on um, like the Greek plays by Sophocles um, and Euripides, and based a bit on uh, the Aeneid and the Odyssey. Ah, cool. I love you know all that old Greek mythology. What what is it that really draws you to those stories? Um, probably um, the main thing that draws me to them is like um, the. Uh, the influence that they've had on Western culture, I mean, it's, it's been such a big influence and you can, you can almost see it in uh, nearly every story that you read, every story that you see on TV, every story that you see in a movie. Um, it's had such a massive influence over all of it. And I, the fact that we keep coming back to it either, like, either intentionally or unintentionally, I find really fascinating. Awesome. And I understand you also have a podcast that you do about pop culture. Yes, we do. Um, uh, there's three of us. There's myself, uh, Ralph, who hosts, and Aleri. Um, it's called Snap, Crackle, and Pop Culture Podcast. Um, hit us up. We uh, do um, bi-monthly. So it's every two weeks we do a podcast. Uh, they usually go up Thursday night, Friday morning. Um, and it's about just general pop culture. We try and get something about like comics in there, something about movies in there, usually a bit about a TV show. And every now and then we'll hit up um, an artist that we're following and talk about them as well. Awesome. And maybe we'll have you guys on our show soon too. That'd be great. All right. Thanks. So I'm here talking to Sam Webster, the creator of a fascinating new comic called Sometimes I Want to Kill You All. Uh, can you tell us a bit about what this is? It's a great title. Um, essentially a lot of venting on my part um, just taking a bunch of frustrations that I tried airing through the proper channels didn't work so I made a comic about it instead fair enough so it's all about uh, public transport right yeah um, essentially I live in a tiny village but work in a city so I have to be on a bus for like an hour and a half each way per day which like three hours travel for an eight hour shift it's doesn't seem worth it sometimes and um yeah just like people on public transport are dicks yeah i mean i've i've had my experiences with that as well um so you've also got a couple issues of unfamiliar skies can you tell us a bit about that comic too yeah of course um unfamiliar skies is a sci-fi coming of age story uh it stars Clarice muston born onto a colony ship 19 never known anything outside of the ship uh, so she does what any rebellious teenager does, runs away from home. Um, immediately crashes the scout ship she stole to do that, and starts getting blackmailed, and it just sort of escalates for her from there. Awesome. And uh, for the capers, I must say, obviously we have to talk about Joe Cape. 
um, which is your superhero book. Do you want to tell us the plot of that? And for the capers, everyone knows I love capes, and I'm currently wearing one as we're having this discussion. Well, unfortunately, in issue one, they ban capes. <laughs> All right, we're done. Um... <laughs> All right, uh, go down as a health and safety risk. It's a trip hazard. Um, and that is pretty much the tone of the comic overall. Uh, the superheroes in this world are privately employed by insurance companies. If you pay your premiums, you can call them to save you. Um, and they get called to stuff that doesn't really need their attention. Uh, for example, there's a bit where they're called to a marital dispute. A couple are going at each other, and they're standing in the doorway going, there is nothing I can punch that will fix this. Yeah, not every problem can really be solved by punching. Uh, sadly, the ones on the train also can't be <laughs> solved by punching. You can, they just tend to call the police, and then it gets awkward. Yeah. Fair enough. And where can, uh, where can we find all these books? Uh, www.sjwebster.net Brilliant, and we'll include that link in the show notes as well, Capers. Thanks for talking to us. No problem. So I'm here with uh, Owen and Jeffrey, who have created some psychedelic comics, and they're going to tell me all about them. Do you want to go first? Well, the Psychedelic Journal, we've been running for five years, and it's an anthology. Every issue is standalone. We've got about 15 stories in each one. They're kind of self-contained uh, and much like, I don't know, something like 2000 AD, you kind of have lots of different artists from all over the UK and writers too. And we, we don't laugh at that. It, um, and so you've got lots of different tones. Some of them are horror, some of them are comedy. Some of them are just straightforward dramatic. Some of them are completely stupid. So, and most of them, if not all of them, are psychedelic in some way. Uh, we did time travel for about three years and then we changed to doing, we did a Wild West one and our latest issue, which is out today, is general wizardry, so it's a wizard issue. And it's at least as good as 2008, if not better, because 2008, to my knowledge, does not have that many wizards. How many wizards on a scale of on a scale of wizards? In our comics, so many wizards. You can't <laughs> move for the wizards. So many wizards. And you can find it. You can find it on Comicsy. If you want wizards, look for the psychedelic journal. Yeah. All right. So on a, on a scale of Gollum to Fellowship, how many wizards? More than the Fellowship, like a whole a horde of. Balrogs, that's how many wizards. Like a Balrog made of wizards. Yeah, or a wizard made of Balrogs. <laughs> I don't know which is worse. Well, it's a hard choice. <laughs> so where can people find the Psychedelic Journal? Uh, look for us on Comixy or look for us on Facebook. I think we're, we're probably on Twitter. We're on Twitter. We're on Twitter yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're Psych Journal on Twitter, Psych underscore Journal, and we're the Psychedelic Journal on Facebook or on Word in your URL bar there. and uh, But there's nothing else. I don't think there's anything else called the Psychedelic Journal unless some kind of psychotropic, like, academic journal has started up since we've done it. But there could be. I mean, it's always possible. We'll include the links in the show notes so everyone can find them very easily. Uh, thanks for talking to us, guys. Cheers. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, it's about an hour until the con ends, and I am uh, taking a bit of a ra break. I'm, I'm sitting uh, behind Sarah Millman's table while she goes and buys some comics. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's been a great day. I am exhausted. Um, I think I've done, what, 15 to 20 interviews, um, which you've all probably heard by now. Um, she's... Uh, but yeah, it's been a really good day. It's been a lot of fun, and um, you know, I've been really enjoying it all. It's been a really good con, I have to say. Um, it's been, you know, for considering it's mostly focused on the indie comics and everything. You know, there's been a really good variety of of books, and um, I've discovered so many new comics, and uh, even a couple of new podcasts that, um, you've, as you've probably already heard, and uh, we're going to be probably doing some crossovers with them soon um several of the guests that uh you already heard me speak to today have been uh, asking if they can come on the show properly so that's very exciting it's a bit of like a sneak peek of uh who might be upcoming and uh i'm gonna go because there's an uh, an announcement happening oh there's a prize draw i'm gonna go after the prize draw david finally leaves the convention and returns back to the Airbnb. 
Well, I am back at the homestead at the the Airbnb now. It's about uh, ooh, it's about a quarter to eleven on Saturday. Um, I've been out hanging out with uh, Joe Glass and Is McAuliffe, uh, among several others. Um, Vince Hunt showed up and a few of the other guests from the con. Um, frankly, I <laughs> I didn't catch half their names. Whoops. Um. But yeah, it's been a great day. Um, you know, we got a little cut off earlier by Iz. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been a great, really good con. Um, you know, I have to say, like, in, in terms of um, last year, I felt like a lot of the cons that I went to like this that were smaller and just focused on the comics that I knew everyone in the room. And maybe that sounds a little conceited or uh name droppy or whatever but you know it, it was nice to walk into a con and not know everyone and meet new people and, and have that that opportunity to actually you know make new friends which i love to do and i definitely did today um but yeah i i met like tons of new people um so many that i don't even remember all their names to be honest um but that's a con for you. I mean, I remember a lot of the comics. Uh, I think that, you know, it was a really good day. Um, and I have to give it up for Iz for, for putting together a really great show. I mean, um, considering that it was one room with, what, like 50 tables, maybe 45? I don't know. I didn't really count. But it actually took me the whole day to walk around and actually talk to everyone and... um every everyone seemed to be you know it was everyone i talked to it was like it was really high quality tables you know every everything was really good um everything was was really like positive it was just a positive positive day um you know all the people i knew did really who who i spoke to afterwards were like you know yeah they you know they they did really well in the day um and I just think, like, it was a fun con. I don't know. Maybe I'm uh, just talking out of my ass a little bit. But, um, you know, it was fun. Like, everything from, for me, you know, like, talking to um, Vince Hunt about uh, the Awesome Comics podcast and, you know, how, you know, how far they've come since they started, which is, you know, pretty incredible to talking to the the king's legacy guys who have only put out one issue so far and are you know asking me for advice about um, a kickstarter for for issue two and guys i wish you the best of luck and and you know everything we can do to help but um you know it was it was it was you know from the big to the small that's really what i'm trying to say is um it was it was a great day scott you might not want to use this one i might record uh another version of this when I'm a bit more sober um yeah okay that's it for me <laughs> oh David you fucking drunk but no seriously thank you very much to David Malofsky and all the wonderful people who they talked to at the Cardiff Independent Comic Expo it sounded like a lot of fun I'm very sorry I couldn't be there but like I said issues with travel and also <laughs> Fucking hate whales. Although this did sound really like a lot of fun. I feel like I'm missing out. You know? Maybe bad stuff doesn't happen in whales all the time. Maybe it just happens to me. Why does that have always why does it always happen to me? What did I ever do to you, whales, huh? What did I ever do to you? But if you enjoy the show, Capers, please tell your friends, share it from the rooftops. And if you haven't already, go back and listen to some of our other super episodes, like the episode where David and I both went to a comic convention, Leamington Comic Con, that was a lot of fun. And you can listen to the show on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube, or at podcapers.com. We have a Patreon. Check out the rewards, patreon.com forward slash ap2hyc. And if you want to get in touch with us, suggest show topics, or maybe you want to come on the show yourself, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at ap2hyc, or email us at podcapers at ap2hyc.com. Thank you very much to Dan Harris for a logo, the lovely microphone, the red and blue 3D glasses, those are mine. And thank you for listening. This has been Podcapers, the official podcast of a place to hang your cape. Cue the music!
And thank you, David, for doing that. Capers, I hope you enjoy this little bit of shake-up of our usual format. And I hope you enjoy listening to David and all of his wonderful exports and all the people that he talked to. Now, talk to David, I'm... What did he talk to? David, I'm glad you had a good time. I certainly wouldn't have because it's Wales and I, a good time cannot be found for me there. That awful place, that awful, awful sheep infested place. But the point is you had fun. And if you had fun today, capers, Please tell your friends, shout it from the rooftops. And if you haven't already, go back and listen to some of our other super episodes. Like, for example, when we both, David and I, went to Lamington Comic Con. Check out that episode. It was a lot of fun. And you can listen to the show on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube, or at podcapers.com. Uh, we have a Patreon. Check out the rewards. Patreon.com forward slash AP2HYC. And if you want to get in touch with us, suggest show topics, or maybe come on the show yourself, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at AP2HYC, or email us at podcapers at ap2hyc.com thank you very much to dan harris for the logo the lovely microphone the red and blue 3d glasses those are mine and thank you for listening this has been pod capers the official podcast of a place to hang your cape cue the music <laughs>